Hello and welcome. I am Vicky. You are watching Vicky Engineer. This video is all about chemical earthquake. Basically, we will learn through various steps. First, what is chemical earthquake? Second, why it is needed in any project? Third, how it works? And fourth, where to use it? So, let's start the video. Chemical earthquake is basically a bow hole in the ground inserted with earth electrode and backfilled with highly conducting and low resistivity and high moisture containing backfill compounds to attain the low resistivity and high conductivity in that earth fit. Understand? Chemical earth fit is that bow hole in the ground inserted with earth electrode and backfilled with the highly conducting materials such as bentonite, marconite or in some cases we use uh, the graphite waste material also to attain the low resistivity and high conductivity in that earthquake. Second why it's needed? The reason behind its need in an earthquake circuit is it attains a very low resistivity. Suppose for an example if we use marconite as a backfill compound in the chemical earthquake then it can bring down the resistance of that earthquake below to 0 0.003 ohm. Understand? One more time. It can attain the resistivity below to 0 0.003 ohm. Whereas if we we'll use that bentonite in that case, that can also bring down to at least 3 ohm. That effect that battery compounds can bring to the earth pit of that system. Next is basically what's the need of it? Why it's needed? The reason behind chemical earthquake rather than some conventional earthquake is it can give you a sustainable low resistivity to that earthquake. Second, why it's needed? Second reason behind that is it requires a very less space. If you will dig a borehole of around 3 to 4 inches, it's more than enough for that procedure. Next, what is third? Is the stability. It gives you the low resistance for a much more high period. For example, if you are uh, for a uh, study says, if we use a magnet as a, a battery compound in an earth bit, then it can last up to 40 years with the same low resistance. Third, how it works. Basically, there are many battery compounds out of which uh, we will uh, take an example that more, uh, more commonly used some materials. First is graphite based battery compound. Graphite based battery compound is most commonly used chemical earthing right now. Since its graphite is basically a coal based compound, as you know, graphite is basically a coal based compound. It may affect the copper electrode in the ground or uh, earthquake in a long run. That's why in some cases people don't go for graphite based compound if they are going for uh, chemical earthquake. At least if you are going for a chemical, a chemical earthquake then go for a bentonite at least. Then what is bentonite? Basically bentonite is a mineral ore compound which is very much sodium active in nature. Understand? Bentonite is a mineral ore compound which is very sodium active in nature so that it, it contains much more amount of water in it. That is, it maintains the moisture level. In simpler word, if we tell, bentonite can contain 5 times of its weight of water in it. Understand? If we are using 1 kilogram of bentonite, then it can absorb the 5 kilogram that is 5 liters of water in it understand and the second point is bentonite can expand up to 13 times of 13 times of its dry volume what is the two plus points of bentonite first is it can absorb 5 times of its weight of water in it so that it contains much more moistness in that earth so that the resistivity is the low resistivity maintained. Second, it can expand up to the 13 times the volume of 13 times of its dry volume. Understand? 
these are the uh, two things next how do we use bentonite as vacuum compound the bentonite is mixed with water and when it, when it is made to a slurry you pour it down to the earth earth pit or borehole made in the ground basically the uh, we get the bentonite with it it's uh, with a 25 kg polyvinyl actually if we are going for 25 kg of bentonite and mix it with the water it can suffice to a 1 cubic feet of uh, a deep hole if it's the wet in condition but in case of it's a dry condition then that bentonite can suffice up to 2, two cubic feet understand the difference if it's dry bentonite can suffice uh, suppose for a uh, 1 cubic feet the same bentonite can suffice to double the amount of depth that is for 2 cubic feet next bentonite can make the earth resistivity level below up to 3 ohms per meter that is all about bentonite if you are having the, any doubt in the, this explanation feel free to let me know in the comment section so that i will let you know what with the solutions first next is basically in some cases uh, suppose it's a power plant or railway line in that cases we have to we have to mandatory to maintain much more low resistance level uh, with the earth pit in that cases we use marconite basically marconite can attain the earth resistance level below up to 0 0.003 ohm below up to 0 0.003 it can go that low that is the main plus point of marconite and the second advantage of marconite is it can last up to 35 to 40 years marconite can last up to 35 to 40 years without fail that is the sustainability marconite is more sustainable than bentonite and bentonite is more sustainable than the graphite based compound if you are studying or you are inserting electrical steam or anything uh, mark these differences don't be confused mark these differences simply i'm explaining you simply then also if you are having any doubt let me know so i'll try to uh, again clarify you on that situation next is how marconite to be used basically marconite is mixed with the cement and uh, then poured with some water and uh, we have to make a slurry and that slurry to be poured down in the borehole and the ratio is three times of marconite to be mixed with one time of cement 3x or three times of marconite and with, to be mixed with one time one time of cement and if it's a amount of 4 kg then one liter of water to be poured in that to make it slurry understand one more time more simply 4 kg of mix of metonite, sorry marconite and cement to be poured with 1 liter of water to make a slurry first then what is the ratio of uh, marconite and cement then marconite to be 3 times and cement to be 1 times and for example if you are mixing 3 kg of marconite and 1 kg of cement and make it a mix then that should be mixed with 1 liter of water to make a slurry and then that slurry to be poured down in the a hole or bore hole we have taken the ground. Understand? Good. Next is why marconite uh, is used and how costly this is. Marconite is the most premium earth pill compound available right now and this is little costlier than bentonite. Bentonite is the most affordable one. And if you if you will do it with the sustainability and the cost, then bentonite is the super you can go for. If you ask me for my suggestion, I'll go for the bentonite one rather than the graphite waste or coal based packing compound. Next is the low resistivity and the reason behind that is basically when you pour down the slurry in the hole, it makes a own structure access like structure. If after some time you can uh, dig it down then you will see uh, a RCC like structure 
Hence, we have uh, dig the hole in the ground. We have uh, the same structure is fixed in, uh, in that ground. In some cases, we need that uh, earth pit to be shifted from one point to another. That also we can do with that, with that same conductivity and low resistivity in that circuit. So it's called much more premium uh, comparing to others. Next is how it uh, works. I have already explained how it works. Again, one more time, a quick repeat. These backfill compounds are much more highly conducting in nature and contains much more water level in them. The main reason of two reasons they are used or they are suggested or advised to use on some conventional pit systems that is like uh, charcoal or salt or anything. The two reasons behind it, they are much more conducting in nature on them. If you will uh, make a differentiation and if you are students, uh, mind some differences I am saying over here, you can use it in your further use or further study. First difference is conventional compounds and uh, the uh, backfill compound, advanced compound. First, these backfill compounds are much more conductive in nature rather uh, in comparison to the uh, conventional compounds like uh, charcoal or salt. Second reason is this bentonite or magnet, these chemical compounds, these compounds absorbs much more water in comparison to the conventional compound. And the third is they are more sustainable in comparison to them. These backfill compounds, chemical earth pits are much more sustainable to them. One more difference if you go for some people are going for that on that reason actually. If you will ask me, I will always go for chemical compound. Though it's more cost, little more costly, costly than the uh, uh, conventional one, but if you will go for the sustainability, if the uh, sustainability, then it goes for double or triple than the conventional one. So I will go for personally, I go for the chemical earth thing. Next is basically we will discuss on what is bentonite and uh, marconite and what is the difference. First difference between bentonite and marconite is bentonite is a mineral ore compound, whereas the marconite is the artificially made com compound. Understand? Bentonite is the mineral ore compound, whereas the marconite is the artificially made compound. So, bentonite can keep the resistivity below up to 3 ohms, whereas marconite can attain it to 0 0.003 ohm. Understand? And third is marconite is uh, much more sustainable in comparison to bentonite. Though bentonite is not, not a bad option, but marconite is much more premium one. If you are going for marconite project, it can sustain up to a 32. A study says it can last up to 40 years. If you take a scene, a safer side also, it minimum 35 to 40 years it can go up to. Second is where to use it. Basically, soils with more alkal alkaline or more acidic in nature or suspected to being so or having some space deficit in such cases, we go for chemical earthing. Advantages of chemical earthing. Chemical earthing needs a very small space very small surface space to do a earth bed in comparison to the conventional one. Next, in chemical earth bed, you can attain the earth resistivity uh, level below to 3 ohm to 0 0.003 ohm. One more time, be attentive. In chemical earthing, we can get down the uh, resistivity level of that earth bed below to 3 ohm to 0 0.003 ohm where 3 ohm stands for if you are going for bentonite then it, uh, it can bring down the resistivity level to point, uh, sorry, 3 ohm if again you are going for the marconite then it can bring down to 0 0.003 ohm ah, one more, more important thing 
If you are technical students, I am asking you one question over here. First question is how much we need for commercial office use or home use. That's the same resistance we need. And second is if it's industrial, then how much we need. And third is for uh, power plant or railway like thing, what we will need. I'm asking you three questions. Go through and let me know in the comment section. So that's it for chemical output now. I'm Vicky signing off. Bye bye. See you next.